think there's a heritage that runs as deep with cotton and cotton farming as there is with the families like us that grow it. I never wanted to do anything else and wouldn't want to do anything else. I think my dad was the same way. I guess it's just one of those things that gets in your blood. As far back as I remember, every day when my father left the house, I was going with it. In 1915, early C. Ewing joined Delta and Pineland, continuing his work on pest control and crossbreeding varieties, which led to the creation of fast fruiting and early maturing cotton to avoid boll weevil destruction. D and PL started referring to its new varieties as Delta Pine and began its reign as the premier cotton breeder of the Mid-South, overcoming environmental challenges to produce premium quality, high yielding cotton while forming a bond with farmers across the nation. This was our, our great grandfather, dad's grandfather that was first generation farmer and the boys are fifth generation farmers now. This was given to us by uh, one of our sales representatives, but it's just a neat memento that uh, we're proud to have. Delta Pine's more than just a cotton company. One of the, the big milestones was the development of smooth leaf cotton, which coincided with the increase in mechanical harvest and allowed growers to have better grades of cotton once it was mechanically harvested. We had to produce a variety that was in what I always called the ballpark on each of the main characteristics. Seedling vigor, seed stand establishment, rapid growth, early fruiting. It has to start early to have an early crop. This is a cotton seed bag brought up here by Dr. Keith Jones with a, a new variety of cotton that they called Delta Pine 150. We tried it and liked it. The next year they brought it out as a new variety called 50, Delta Pine 50, which turned out to be a, a great variety for that day. My dad was a cotton farmer. He had cattle, cotton, pine trees, pecans. The farm was what I was most interested in. It was absolutely obvious that the Delta Pine varieties on our soil with our climate conditions performed better. In 95 we had a tobacco budworm and everybody had a disastrous crop. In 96 it was probably the best time ever for Delta Pine to launch 33B because it was resistant to the tobacco budworm. Oh it was uh, just a revolution actually in, in farming. Just unbelievable revolution in farming. My grandfather was able to see that first crop of something to come in to be genetically modified to control the worm. It saved sprays. We all started making more cotton. Roundup Ready has made farming a lot easier. With our basic chemicals, we were hurting the cotton plant. There's no way around it, and Roundup did not hurt the plant. Oh, some of the cottons that are still being put out have probably come from the genetics and the lineage of the cottons that Doc Jones bred. I was testing what we call triple nickel or DP555 Bogard Roundup Ready. It was a very tremendous yielder. I was really excited about it, except for everybody else saw what we call the perceived problems with triple nickel. We were all scared because it had low vigor. Yeah, you know, I really had to push hard. I, I'd go out and talk to the agronomist saying, if you think it looks bad now, wait till harvest, wait till harvest, because uh, the yields will convince you. We did finally make a decision to release the variety. 555 made a cotton farmer out of it. You had to start very early uh, with growth regulators. You had to look at your rain forecast. So all year long, you're looking at just a bunch of plant. But then every year it would hit, it would fruit up and make this tremendous crop. Sometime about the 4th of July, it just took off like a racehorse. I heard several farmers dub it the coronary cotton because you're going to have a coronary all year until harvest. It was like the hero of the industry for us at the time. And that was followed closely by our class of 10 varieties and later that have that equivalent yield in a much more usable package. The NPE program's in a major step in the way of getting the best varieties out to the grower. When we're planting the crop, I'll have my neighbors call them. They'll say, man, they got all these new Delta Pine numbers. 
did you have any in your test plot? And I said, yeah, I did. This one did good. This one, I didn't think it was real good on my land. That's why we do it. You know, I've known of certain instances where we think it's a great variety. We put it out in an MPE and it doesn't work. There's something that the farmer sees in it that we didn't see. And I think that's the most critical point. So we drop that variety and we go with one that's better. Delta Pine answered the call for better Texas bread varieties with the release of DP1044 B2RF in 2010. Groundbreaking water use efficiency and performance on dry land made DP1044 B2RF the number one planted cotton variety in the entire state from 2012 to 2014. They're progressive enough to always want to better their product. Finding the right variety for that lighter ground that handles nematodes well is definitely something to look forward to. It all comes back to the breeding program. They come up with a variety that's resistant to this root knot nematode and come up with varieties that, that you can spray to kill your weeds. The next big monkey we'll have to keep off our back will be the pigweed. I wish that every farmer would take the time to go to some of the test plots that Delta Pine has. You got an untreated plot there that would just scare you to death. Bogard 2 extend flex cotton and allow growers to have the choice of, of utilizing multiple herbicide technologies. Now we're moving on to Bogard 3. It's an addition of another novel gene that are available for management of LEP pests and cotton. So now we're to the point of having a very sustainable, diverse set of genes that are gonna enable cotton pest management to be sustainable for a very long time into the future. It's all from the technology we have, the, the genetics in the seed and the herbicides we have, and we have to give credit to that. And that's what Delta Pine, I believe, is working toward, just trying to provide for an increased world population. If, if my grandfather were still here, he'd be amazed, I mean, at, at how much cotton we could pick. Cotton's one of those crops Dad's always said, if you take care of it, it usually takes care of you. My grandfather and my father before me both were farmers. I grew up on the farm, and it just was a good life. And, uh, and it's been a good life. Plan to carry on, keep going what they've kept going, and uh, hopefully raise my kids doing the same thing someday. And I, I loved it and still love it and wouldn't want to have it any other way.